Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Bold Analysis. In this podcast, we face the facts with vigor. And it is a fact that Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, the fourth president of Republic of Kenya, decided to use military to run government in his second term because of frustrations by those that were around him, those who were supposed to be his destiny bearers, or rather his, uh, to make him get a track record. And for better part of his second term, after the fallout with his deputy, William Ruto ran a smear narrative against the president that the president was militarizing the country. And it was at the center of that because the moment the military was deployed to run uh, some, to help run some different projects, I remember the NMS, after the creation, with the creation of NMS, actually the military man was brought in to help run NMS. And we blamed President Uhuru Kenyatta. But one year later, we have then proved, or uh, as William Ruto would then prove, that Uhuru did not make a blunder. I agree with an assertion that many has been making, that William Samoy Arap Ruto becoming the president was a blessing in disguise. Because if he was not to become the president, we will spend the rest of our lives believing that he was the engine behind Uhuru Kenyatta's success. I was just laying out that point for you. Now, in the recently concluded uh, climate summit, President William Ruto decided to go and pick military personnel in first lifting of KICC. The first lifting of KICC, the beautiful uh, design there, was done sole. Uh, it, was, it was the tender was done, was picked, was given to military. It was not a crisis because the government started organizing this summit last year in September. So they had one year. And so if this was to be done by the Ministry of uh, Environment or the Ministry of Tourism, where that case falls in, it could still be done. But William Ruto, out of all options, decided to pick the military. I will explain why. Ladies and gentlemen, but before that, I have good news from Topmark Movers. Topmark Movers is a startup company in Nairobi here, amazing, with amazing staff, and they help in moving your office items or household items from one place to the other. When you are moving, your most critical thing here is your belongings are your treasures, and you really regard them very special. So you need a company that will guarantee you safety. Visit Topmark Movers, and they have a website, www.topmarkmovers.com. And when you contact them, you can contact them here, plus 254 7 19 Top Mark Movers, quality is everything. And let's support, uh, let's support those uh, young men doing something. That guy has employed, I think, around now, I think the last we spoke was around 12. And it's amazing, it's also creating opportunity. That's why in the bold, we also partner with that, with them, to support them. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to this. Why do you think that William Samoy Ruto has picked Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, strategy of working with the military. And uh, it was good. When Uhuru was doing it, Uhuru picked the military because he was in a crisis. But again, it was a pilot for coming presidents. Then to understand that our men in uniform 
are only not just effective in protecting our boundaries, but they are also effective in service delivery. In terms of discipline and zero corruption and none tolerance i want to explain why this is important and of course i think to some extent i normally think that kenya kwanza or uhuru kenyatta apology it was if it was for politics um uh, smear campaign was for politics they ran this smear campaign even after elections and that's why i don't believe it was purely for politics they owe uhuru kenyatta some apology because some of these things they're doing are things that uh, they defamed Uhuru Kenyatta with it. They ran a smear campaign against the Uhuru Kenyatta administration on this. William Ruto was left with no option. Because when he had to move this on that direction because he was breaking um, his relationship with the military had to strengthen. Uhuru Kenyatta left a very strong relationship between the office of the presidency as the commander-in-chief of the defense forces and the military department. So he realized that um, there would be insecurity of tenure with now the spreading coups in Africa. And what the presidents have then realized is your first, the team that should be your friends are the military you have no option as a sitting president you have to be with the military and two things have happened he has uh, denied them uh, the military was running the meat commission kenya meat commission and the kenya meat commission it was taken to the military it was run by them and by the time uhuru kenyatta was leaving it had um, it was making profit and of course, the proceeds of that was helping the government. But to William Root administration, that move was um, squashed and probably they were denied. And that mid-commission is not where Uhuru Kenyatta left it. So what they've decided and why he has maintained that relationship is, number one, because of insecurity of tenure. He's realizing that if he's not going to work close with them, then they are going to be them so much of their independence they can collude against you and the african presidents i want to believe that if they have a whatsapp group then some of the presidents they may want to add in that whatsapp group are these presidents that have been ousted by coups the gabon president omar bongo ali bongo the niger mali Burkina faso they would want to get coups and want to find out uh, how effectively those have been done that is one thing uh, that is one observation i am making the other second thing that william ruto why william ruto must then stick with the men in uniform is because of incompetence incompetent civil service not civil service civil servants we were on record saying that cabinet and most uh, parastatal appointments most of these appointments whether it was by design or by the political forces people were picked on political merit do you merit politically are you a shareholder did you campaign for me are you an enemy of Uhuru Kenyatta those were the factors on table can you lobby for votes in your constituency and do you also have the financial muscles to pay the appointing authority those have been going on and William Ruto might have done an internal audit and realized that if he's fully to depend on the people there as appointed, he has a bunch of incompetent fellows. And if he's to uh, 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 depend fully on them, then he will go the first term with nothing tangible. And this is what happened. Uhuru had competent permanent secretaries. People suffer because Uhuru never sent people home. Even after taking power from Mwai Kibaki, Mwai Kibaki had been in power for long and Mwai Kibaki molded, did capacity building for the civil service. And by the time he was leaving, he had one of the best. And Uhuru Kenyatta inherited it. So when we did 
when the 2022 transition was actually seen as a transition of shedding off the, the fellows that were members of the perceived dynasty, dynasty and then these other fellows were given chance. So that is, what, that is one of the challenges and William Ruto realized it was not going to be practical, it was not going to be possible to get a track record from those who he is working with. That is something number three. Uh, lastly, it's also an isolation card. It's also a card to isolate others. I know very well, and I think this was reported in some media, sections of media, that there were uh, people were scrambling and angling at different uh, tenders on that climate summit. Quite a number of tenders, they were angling those tenders. And it is because of interest. The deputy president uh, or some ministry and some government, people were eyeing and he knew very well that uh, if there is something that can break government, it's a scramble for tenders. I want to tell you, the fallout between William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta can be explained in the context of sponsoring or rather supporting Raila Odinga for 2022 general election. But Charles Kater said that Uhuru Kenyatta fell out with Uhuru William Ruto in the first term. And it was purely because of interests. And those interests were including those tenders. So William Ruto decided, I'm going to use the military so that I can lock them out. Because you know when military are doing something, it is above board. It is not something that you can really control. And I think it was good because the country, I'm going to look at this in my next podcast, the country has been facing a lot of challenges, security challenges, and you want to deploy, you want to bring military as early as that. That was a high profile uh, summit and you wanted maximum military support to make sure that you're not really ashamed when you have guests around. So I still believe it's not something out of order. If look at uh, what's happening, uh, read articles about the famous Nyayo House. Why Nyayo House all of a sudden have had a problem? Nyayo House, where the passport process is going on, there have been all of a sudden a lot of backlog. And between you realize, oh, uh, machine that is printing, the system printing, good conduct is down. The other day, birth, birth certificates is down. National IDs is down. And then you wonder, what, what is really happening is just once in a while, all of a sudden. And what Uhuru did, he knew these things would be there. He brought in members of intelligence. Yes. So now, that's what's happening. It is not something out of order to use the military personnel. And of course, also our profile seems to have gone down. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my take.